appreciate everybody being here this year. Okay, new Wednesday, March 11, 2020, the Michigan City Commission on Social Staff and Actual Medical Males. Call to order. Which I did. Pledge. Uh, revenue on the city pledge. Pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For those that weren't aware that the, the railroad has wanted us to do that, I'm going to pay for it. Yes. Well, you know, I, I think that should have been put to a vote. Oh, let him let it. So, okay. Moving on down. Roll call. Arthur Payne. Present. Joan Ganshaw. She says she would be absent today. Latayan Trotman. Present. Marty Corley. I'm sure he's on his way. Um, Willie Millsap. Present. Um, Pastor Williams. Um, oh, he's in uh, Anderson at a state church meeting. Okay, um, Pastor Carroll. Present. Um, Nyla Williams. Um, Lester Norvell. Present. Tracy Tillman. Present. Felice Kelly. Present. Albertine Allen. Present. Walter Cox. Present. Okay, and Rodney McCormick is our new commissioner, and he called and said he will not be able to make it today. Um, so we right. have a quorum of nine. He's down at uh, they got a hearing today. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay. Yeah. Next thing on the agenda for the annual expense report. Somebody's not here. And we'll have our guest speaker, uh, Ms. Suzanne Hogan. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, can we go back to the agenda approval of the minutes? I didn't have them. I guess they were out of here. Yeah. Uh, Did everybody get their minutes? minutes yeah. 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 I got them. Okay. With, with that being said, I'll make a motion for approval of the minutes with the, with, with the comment that uh, our secretary needed a very detailed um, set of minutes. Oh, so sure. with that mo motion. I guess that's what I didn't say. That's, that's, why, I, I that's why I noticed it. It's so detailed that yeah. I had to make a comment on it. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I make that motion to accept the minutes as presented. And for second. Second. It's been moved and second to accept the minutes as presented. Are any comments, concerns, adjustments at this time? If not, all those in favor, say by the same aye. Aye. For the same sign, as carried. Thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. thanks, sir. No problem. I looked at my agenda, which I got that from Miss George. Uh, what's the Miss Clark's name now? George? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Miss Clark? Yeah, that's it. Oh, Clark, Clark, Clark George. Yeah, I told you I got a line there. You did. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Moving on down there. And yeah, now we're ready for a speaker. And that would be uh, uh, <coughs> Suzanne Hogan. Yes, sir. All right, uh, ma'am, you're dealing with the census? Yes. Uh, Educators. <coughs> for the city of Indiana. Educators, you have the floor. Thank you, sir. And my computer is not hooking up for whatever reason, so we're going to go through. I brought these presentations. I want to go through them very briefly just to give you a basis for the program which we've been working on and then talk about where we are now. Today is actually the day that the census forms or census invitations are being mailed. So folks should be seeing them in their mailbox any time after today. Um, and we've called this program our partnership program. Clearly it's not a job that we can do alone at census. We have been um, engaging with groups all over the United States and the other United States uh, territories where we need to do this because you know your populations better than we do, frankly. And you know what they need and how they can respond and what their concerns are and how we address those concerns. And you also represent the trusted voices for them um, relative to information about census so that they can make an informed decision about their response. I think everyone um, is aware that there's been a great deal of mistrust of government. There have been concerns in various populations about census data and how it might be shared and its confidentiality. And um, 
it's our goal to get that the word out about what we know about that so that people understand um, the process and and I understand that people will make a decision uh, based on their own experiences and they need to but um, our goal is to get the word out um, in, a, in a way that um, we think helps educate people about the process so I am part of the Chicago region. It's an eight-state region, which includes Indiana. My area of responsibility is essentially sort of the northern counties of Indiana, um, including the port. And I have been working with those counties to try to engage um, local governmental units and all kinds of organizations that benefit from federal funding about census and the critical need to ensure that, that we get good census responses. Um, article one, section two, and I'm on slide five here. Um, and again, I'm gonna be flipping quickly, but I'll try to let you know where I'm at. Article five, section two of the Constitution requires that every 10 years, every resident of the United States be counted. That, um, that is anyone living in any of the, um, any of the states, any of the territories, uh, military bases and other um, outside of the country federal properties. Uh, it does not relate to citizenship. It relates to residents. We are attempting um, to count the number of residents so that we can allocate the 435 seats in Congress appropriately amongst populations and that we can disperse something on the order of $675 billion in federal funds that go to programs for child care and education, health, um, Medicare programs, road and infrastructure programs, all those federal funds that are then pushed down through the states to the local levels. The, um, the apportionment of the 435 seats in Congress also impacts locally township boundaries, ward boundaries, precinct boundaries uh, for election purposes. So it will start with the Congress, but it will flow all the way down. Um, so it really is important at the local level for you know, township trustees, mayors, town council boards, etc. So um, that's the basis for um, doing the census. Again, it's a kind of constitutional mandate, and it is uh, it has two purposes: one, to ensure that we're putting the representation of individuals where it belongs. Indiana actually lost the Congress congressional seat in the year 2000. We do not wish to lose another one this year. Um, and then the, uh, the funding, which is something upwards of $675 billion that comes down to a number of federal programs. Um, I'm going to go very quickly through the process. We went out there to address canvassing. We base everything we do on a residential address. That's our key factor. If there is a building that may be populated by an individual, that is a residence, and all our counts are done on, based on residence. So we go through initially and work with the local governments, the local building commissions, et cetera, and find all the places people might live, make sure we have addresses for everyone. If, it, if it's a home that's been divided, we need to have an A address and a B address or whatever. So we've gone through um, over the past year and worked with the local communities to, to ascertain those correct addresses. Um, we will be um, working the census process, and then we will be using those addresses to determine where we did not get responses, and we will be doing non-response follow-up. We will be sending census takers to homes to get that information. And, and I did leave some, uh, we're still recruiting. <laughs> we would like to see neighbors counting neighbors, and so we're trying to um, hire folks in each zip code to make sure you're working within the neighborhood. Did you have a question I can respond to? I'm happy to do that throughout here. So what about homeless shelters? Those are done under something called group quarters counts. Okay. Um, we do college dormitories, hospices, hospitals, uh, jails and prisons, homeless shelters, and unsheltered homeless locations as well. I mean, we've been out, again, asking communities, where do we find folks who are living in their vehicles or living under a bridge or that sort of thing so that we can get out and count them. And those counts will all be done in the March 30th to April 1st time frame, and we will have census takers go out and attempt to get those numbers so that we can get those folks counted. Yes? Uh, question reference to apartment complexes. Mm -hmm. As you know, those are rental units and it's transit ins and outs. And it's done every 10 years. Right. So how do you guys have a mechanism in place that can make sure that at 32325 residents live there? We, 
the, the, we have the same issue with some with college dorms. Mm -hmm. It is a trans. It might not be the same individual living there, but there will be an individual living there because it's a residential unit. Right. So we want to make sure that it gets funded. Okay. Um, so to the extent that it is occupied now, we will count the individual that's in there now, understanding that that person could move, mm -hmm. but understanding that it's likely in 10 years there will still be another resident at that address. And is that where that non-response address person will be dispatched? Um, if, if the individual receives an invitation at that address and does not respond, mm -hmm. anyone who does not respond, we're essentially going to sort where we got responses against where we didn't. I'm going to take that address list and give it to someone to go out and go door to door and get that information. Gotcha. Those folks will make three attempts to get the information from the individual at that address. Now, I have to tell you, they are authorized if a neighbor is willing to give them adequate information to complete the census to take that information from a neighbor. Okay. So you may want to answer the door and answer it yourself and not have your nosy neighbor answer for you. Okay. But that's, you know. Okay. Um, and there are a number of other ways um, you can respond. This year is a really, um, it's the first year we've ever done internet responses. And that is going to allow us to track responses as they, as they come in so that we can target areas where we're not getting good responses very quickly, which we think is critical. Okay. And the window the window for the non-response is, what, 30 be, days, 60 days? July 30th is when we're now projecting to go out. Uh, we'll be out in the middle of April mm -hmm. through July 30th to try and get all those numbers collected. Okay. Um, and again, we will be able to watch... The concern about Michigan City, and this is a little out of sequence, but the concern about Michigan City is that you have what we call low response score areas. You have areas that are almost 30% undercounted in Michigan City. That's of concern to us, and we're trying to get with local groups to try and get those numbers up. What what, I think people are frightened. They don't have internet access. Um, there are concerns about other issues related to responding. Um, they just don't, they don't understand the criticality and the importance of it. And those are people, you know, we undercounted children by a million in the year 2010. Our biggest undercounts are children from zero to five. So all those services that those children get are underfunded in the areas where we're undercounted. Zero to five years? Zero to five years. So could I ask you a question? <clears throat> sure. Uh, those people that go to Maryville or Sherville to take the training, mm -hmm. are they from Michigan City? Typically, they will, yeah. I mean, and there'll be people from Merrillville Maryville being trained there as well. There'll be people from Valparaiso being trained there as well. That's our local area census office. But are you sending people back to Michigan City to do the, the census? We are. It is our desire to ensure that people work in their zip code to the extent we can make that happen. And if they finish their zip code and wish to go elsewhere... Um, and we need someone else where it could be that we deploy them there. But it's our desire to keep neighbors in their neighborhoods. So what about those people that cannot afford to uh, travel to Maryville to take uh, advantage of the job? So how are you addressing those people that live in, in those neighborhoods? Can you, do it, can you do it online? Can you do it uh, a lot online? of it will be done online. Um, and I don't have a specific answer to that question. I. Um, there is a need to travel to those neighborhoods to do the um, census, so there is a presumption that transportation is not an issue. Well, if you live within that area, mm -hmm. you may not need a car. Mm -hmm. It right. is possible. Yeah. yeah, no, it is possible. So you said you wanted neighbors doing neighbors. Yeah. Um, and I don't, and I can get you a specific <coughs> answer to that question. I believe it will be that you know public transportation and those sorts of. Uh, sorts of things, but um, you're well, I mean, you correct. You Maryville is where Michigan is. City you could use the public transportation, but you can't use it to travel to Maryville for the training. So, therefore, a lot of neighborhoods are not being served by it. will be undeserved, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ma'am, reference okay. to the area of Michigan City that's been undercounted. Mm -hmm. Uh, the census is every 10 years. Mm -hmm. Now, is that area always the same area, or does it fluctuate throughout the city? It does fluctuate. Um, but <clears throat> across Indiana, and that's really what I'm familiar with because that's where I work, it is the larger, more populous areas that are undercounted more. Um, just as an example, let me give you an example of the volume of, a, of an issue that this is. When the lieutenant governor kicked off the state census program in August of 2019, 
she indicated that it was the state's belief that for every individual that is not counted in the census, the loss of funds for that individual for that state, based on that individual not counted, is twenty seven hundred dollars per year. Over a ten year period, that's twenty seven thousand dollars per undercounted individual. If your population is thirty percent undercounted, that's a pretty significant number. Okay. But uh, well, once again, I'm yeah. focusing on just Michigan City. Mm -hmm. Is that area that's undercounted always the same area? For example, the it, North End. It is, is it typically the, the downtown area. And I can show you the census tracts because I actually brought a map for the mayor, but I can show you what those are and what those numbers are. Okay. Um, if you like. But my concern was is it always the yeah. same? Like, for example, the North End. Yeah. Is it, it always is. every 10 years? Yeah. It's the North End. It does tend to be in those okay. tracks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, as you look at, and I do some of the eastern counties, which are way less populated than Port County, and it's always that county seat where there's a larger, more urban feel to it. It's those denser populations. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. No problem. So, where are we? We, you know, this next slide on page 11 just talks about there's a lot of distrust of government. There's a question over citizenship issues. Um, there are a lot of impediments to getting this done, which is why the undercount is, I think, what it is um, for the most part. Um, the next slide just talks about the process we've gone through. This establishing where to count was clearly identifying the addresses that were out there that could be residential properties where individuals would reside and we needed to count them. We've been doing a lot of education and outreach to get groups to help us um, let people know census is coming. We are now in full peak operation of counting the census. As I said, today is the day that the census forms have gone out in the mail. And we'll talk a little about what those are. Um, they will be a little different than in the past. Um, then we do the non-response follow-up. That will be when we send census takers out to begin to uh, visit those addresses that did not respond, and in the August time frame, we will begin putting the data together um, so that we can generate the information that we are required to provide to the President of the United States and the Congress for reapportionment and federal funding. That will be a subset of the specific census data that is collected. We are not, the census never gives away all of its data, not never. It will be released in 72 years. Um, which we've just released the 1940 census data, and if any of you have, if any of you get involved or have friends that get involved in genealogy, that is predominantly what it's released for as folks want to use those um, familial connections to do uh, ancestry research, etc. But the data, the specific data that's put in does not get released for 72 years. It was actually challenged in the 80s all the way up to the Supreme Court. Census prevailed. The data was not released to the individual who wanted the um, residential information for a specific individual. So it, we feel, feel awfully confident that, that we are protecting the, the full set of data while just releasing the numbers of individuals per precinct of what ages for voting reapportionment purposes. Um, I think page 15 gives you a direct mail um, calendar. March 12th through 20th, the invitations are coming out. Um, you can be seeing them. It is live. The, the um, site is live today on the internet. You could go home and do your census response um, at 2020census.gov. Um, most individuals will be receiving, unlike in the past, a, an invitation, and, and in your folders, um, I've given you a copy of what that's going to look like. They will receive an invitation to respond. They will not receive a census questionnaire. It should be an envelope that looks like this with something that looks like this in it. And it will say, census has started. You can respond any number of a number of ways. However, um, we've not provided you a paper questionnaire. We are trying to drive people to internet response. And we're trying to do that because it is, frankly, the most secure process method. It also will allow us to track responses so that if we see that there's a 30% undercount likely in one of the census tracts in Michigan City and that's not dropping down very quickly, we can maybe get some more community members, um, some other trusted voices in there, whether that is 
you know, the local health organizations, the local faith-based organizations, the libraries, or whatever, to encourage people to get those counts up. So what are, what are you going to do about those people that do not have internet? Some of us can't afford the PRM. But I don't have internet, so we do about those. There are two things we do about that. One, we have a lot of partners in the area, and I'm in the process right now of setting up what's called mobile questionnaire locations. We are um, we are working with the libraries to ensure that that their um, sites can be used. We are also setting up, and especially in areas where we have the kind of undercounts that you have, places where census workers were born. Um, we are looking for any, one of the things I'm trying to collect is any large events. I know in the eastern counties, it's maple sugar festival time, right? And they have thousands of people come to those festivals. We'll be um, putting mobile response units out there so with census workers. So your workers will have laptops and what have you? Yeah. And iPads, yeah. Okay. And, and partners can do that if there is um, a Work One location, for example, or a library in Michigan City, and that's who I'm trying to seek out right now, who would like to have that on site, and they will simply provide that access and assistance. That's also uh, an option for us. The reason so, I ask the question is because we had someone come and speak to us at our office, uh -huh. and we volunteered our site, but it, it was not conducive to what I think he wanted us to do. And so I have a lot of questions about mm -hmm. uh, people that may have needed a job and wanted to take the training but didn't have access to it. Why couldn't they have had a training site here in Michigan City where there is a problem instead of traveling to uh, Maryville? Well, and that's, again, I, I know that Mrs. Sanders, who's the regional director, is open to those kind of questions when they come up. We ought to be. If that's, you know, if that's a question the community has, we ought to be at least communicating that to her it's and allowing question. her. Um, to respond to it, and I will make sure that gets in the hopper, if you will. If I could say something. Sure. Appreciate it. You have heard so many questions. You know, we got a lot of business on the agenda, as you saw, so I'd like to let her go ahead and get a presentation together. And so if you would just hold off on some of this, if you got those real questions, you can get in touch with her or whatever. But and there's a, I think there's a card in each of the, you know, feel free to call me. That's my job is to make sure community groups, community organizations, and individuals get the answers they need. Yes, ma'am. And this is great, and this is something that we all need to take the initiative of trying to get this out there. On the flip side of this, with the health scare and everything that's going on with the um, with the um, coronavirus and everything, will this prohibit any individual that's going to be coming into other people's residencies to a ask these questions? They're going to fear a lot of people to come. We're into watching that very closely, and it is a huge concern. Okay, no question. We're, we're talking about going to events where there are large groups of people and large, a lot of foot traffic. Just this morning, the state of Illinois canceled their St. Patty's Day parade. Right, Chicago, they did. Et cetera. So, and, and, and we know that's going to have an impact, and we don't know what that's going to be yet, but we do have a group watching that very closely. But it is, it is definitely a concern. So I talked a little about partnership. Again, we're reaching out to a, to a lot of organizations uh, attempting to find those trusted voices in the community that can help us ensure that your constituencies, the folks you know, um, understand the process and the reason for counting and um, can make a reasonable and educated choice to be counted. Um, we, um, I'm just flipping back to the recruiting area. I did bring some of the little recruiting pages. We still are recruiting. It is an online recruiting process. It's 2020census.gov. Um, and we will be hiring probably through the end of March. And at that point, we'll be training in early April and then releasing folks into the field in, in mid-April. On page 35, there's a, there's a mapping tool. For those of you who um, want to go onto the in internet to this, to this website, it will tell you, and it is live today, um, what the responses are coming in from your areas. It will tell you what percentage of the population from our community survey in 2018 has responded to census already. And we'd like to track those. We'd like to see everyone in the community um, who has a constituency track those and, and know where, where we're uh, short on counts and help us get those counts uh, increased. I think the next, there are a couple of other mapping uh, programs that I don't f think are necessarily um, applicable to what you're doing. There's some, some media resources information here. There's some discussion about um, complete um, count committees and partners. 
Um, basically, what we are asking people to do, to the extent they represent organizations, is to consider if there is a resource or a contact that you have that you think can help us get the word to your populations in a reasonable way so that they can be counted appropriately. Um, we're looking for those partnerships, um, whether that's the local library again, I was speaking with someone the other day and they thought the grocery store was a good place, on, you know, kind of next to the Girl Scouts with the Girl Scout cookies. Um, it's only our intent to facilitate, as you said, those folks who don't have computers. This can be done on smartphones as well. Um, and ensure that everyone has an opportunity re to respond. All of that said about the internet response, there will be, a, there will be a, an invitation. A week later, there'll be another reminder to get your census done. There will be a, then a third reminder. And in this, about the second week of April, everyone will get the paper form if that's what they're waiting for. There are many senior citizens who want to do the paper form. We can't give out paper forms. We don't have paper forms. Um, they are not as secure as the internet at this point. But if someone wants one, they will receive one um, probably the second week in April so that they can respond via paper. But our, our intent is to ask them to respond via internet because of the security of it. Um, I think in general that is the program. April 1st is Census Day. We are asking everyone we can speak to if they can do something to highlight um, Census Day, do some kind of an event locally, etc. The schools have just completed a week of statistics in schools to highlight Census because, you know, we've had children taking things home to their parents, etc. If you have or know of any um, resources that we have not um, fully expanded out to in the community. Um, it's been a little difficult in Michigan City. It's been a little, a little difficult in Indiana because over 50% of the government bodies have had newly elected um, officials, and that's been a tough transition for them, and I get that. Um, but again, they're also key to getting this done. They're the individuals who receive those funds, et cetera. So. That being said, that's this is more current information. It will tell you what to expect, what things look like, how you respond. Um, I think it's it's fairly complete. I am. Um, we are supporting 12 languages in paper copies. We are supporting 59 via translation services by phone, which is another way to respond. Um, it is our intent to count everyone, count them once, and count them in the correct place. Um, my responsibility is to coordinate, you know, all of these processes with groups like yourself out there in the community. So you have my card. I'm happy to answer any questions. You have my phone number. You have my email address. You need documents. You need copies of things. The, the 2020 census.gov site is a wealth of information. And if you have a question, it's probably answered there. Um, we've also been working with the Michigan City, um, the Laporte County Libraries. Um, and they are a, kind of a wealth of information as well. So if there's any questions I can answer. Uh, right, no, I appreciate you being here because we're concerned about getting that information. Uh, but I think you <coughs> covered in general the people know. Well, a lot of this got to do with the public. So I think you've covered basically what the general attitude is. I know some of the members have specific questions, but as you said, they have a card, they can call you. Absolutely. Uh, and, and you can clear because some of the questions I know you can't answer. Yourself, yeah, and we're still like the coronavirus question. We're still, I right. checked this morning, you know, we're still trying to, we have a lot of work at home staff, and so that that population is in pretty good shape. But if they go to a fish fry with 3,000 people, yeah, it would be you know, mm -hmm. it's another, it's another, yeah, so we appreciate you coming and uh, sharing with us. It's extremely important issue, especially not a especially with the politics around it. Yeah, well, well we're trying, you know, our real focus is that funding. That is a lot of money in Michigan right. City to yeah. leave on the table. I think that's what the public don't realize is that it affects money. It is the most misunderstood right. Right. piece of the pie. It is right. educational facilities, it's health care for children, it's the Meals on Wheels program, it's Medicare programs, it's road infrastructure. Yeah. You know, I mean, those are really important pieces and you don't want to... Right. Not yet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, no we, problem. We'll carry on with the rest of I mean, if you I'll want to stand and listen, it's all right. But, okay. Uh, thank you for coming. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to collect the sign-in sheets. Yeah, give it up.
Oh, good. We'll just okay. Well, yeah, as we we not interrupted the question, and you see, we got a right. light, light on the right. And so we only got a half hour, so you know we understand this thing. So we can uh, yeah. so, <laughs> get it going to ten. Yeah. Let's get back to it. the first thing I want to do. At the last meeting, we had some members not here, some of the officers. Uh, Although our vice president is still not here in our treasury, but I think we need to go and deal with that in that way. So in our normal process, we should say to run the air with the last thing. Uh, yeah, I'd like to just cut to the chase, and I'd like to make a motion that we retain the current officers who are in their current positions to retain those positions for this year. I'd second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second to retain officers as they exist. Any comments, concerns, questions? If not, uh, all in favor, say if I was saying aye. Aye. Both same sign, I was I ain't got to the point where I don't know where I should thank y'all or y'all taking advantage of it. <laughs> but uh, I enjoy the situation, so I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm right, going on down, let's see, the Youth Leadership Council appointee, uh, it's kind of an interesting situation of we had a brother class that he was going to bring an individual. And then I got the urge that the chairman had recommended an individual. We've been trying to get somebody for six months or eight months or something, and then all of a sudden we get two. And it just so happened, you one of them are here. Uh, the young Solomon, the young gentleman that the chairman recommended, he goes to school in Marion, yes. college in Indianapolis. I talked to him this morning. A good friend an individual is at, at work uh, and can't get off. So I'm open for some suggestions how you think we want to deal with this. <coughs> you know, um, uh, nobody's here to talk to, so we got to pick somebody to represent the commission. We've been not having anybody for so long, I know it would affect the commission, so I'm kind of uptight about extending it. Uh, the, the individual that, that you had recommended that I talked to, now he, being in Indianapolis, would he be able to be up here to your meetings and everything? Yeah, so what we're doing is since we're a youthful commission, we kind of we kind of we cover all aspects of everything. So what we do is we have actually two of our commissioners, well, one of our commissioners already, Commissioner Lane, Chris, Christopher Lane is uh, Pastor Lane's son. Right. We FaceTime him in every meeting. He hasn't missed a single meeting. When he's here and we have meetings, he's here. Well, that's what uh, the young gentleman I talked to this morning asked me if I wanted to FaceTime. Yeah, because we were, we were ready to FaceTime him today. He would have been right here okay, well, talking well, to you. Well, since you're here, uh, first of all, just could you give a, just a brief uh, overview of what it's about and then what I was going to suggest. Would you have any problem uh, interviewing or talking to both young people that want to be involved? No, no, that's our, that's and, our goal. And, yeah. and, 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 you know, make a decision with that, and then we'll educate whichever one on what the commission is all about. Yes. But yes. just to try to get a body to deal with you as quick as possible. Yes, yes. So Brother Fryer will give you information on the young gentleman he's talking about, and you have the information on your person. Yes. So and you, you spoke with him this morning. Yes, sir. So if you could just give us a quick overview of the commission, then we'll let you handle it. So the commission was put into place to combat different social issues with young people. Um, and so uh, we have that body with the body of pertaining of nine people and with uh, different appoint appointments from different um, government heads of our local government here. And one happens to be from this commission here as well. And so we are just trying to combat, well, trying to figure out what different activities we can hold for our young people. Um, we're partnering on partnering with different businesses around Michigan City, not just this Michigan City, but, you know, the Port County as well, to how can we um, have a partnership where we can benefit all of Michigan City, all of the Port County. I'm working closely with uh, PNW, uh, the youth uh, services of LaPorte County, with the youth director, which is Chip Cotman. There's a lot of different things that we're working on. There's a lot of different movement, moving parts. And to to combat what we've all been trying to, what we've all been asking the question of, you know, what's going on with our young people. And so my main deal as being the commissioner or the chairman of this, this, uh, I have my vision. So each, you know, every, every different leader of a commission or whatever, boy, they have their own vision, so I have mine. 
And so the question has been always asked, where's our young people? Where's our young people? Where's our young people? Well, I feel, this is my personal opinion and from you know, my personal experience, we haven't been sought out. So with this commission, we are going to make, we're making something happen where you'll want us. You know, we're going to make you want us. Here we are. So that's kind of the, and then that's kind of the deal with that. And then uh, the ordinance, um, uh, the, the clerk, she has the ordinance. I have an ordinance I can give to you so you can kind of read through uh, the logistics of the commission. Uh, I was just going to quick, quick, I know we don't time restraint. Um, <clears throat> the uh, point I was going to suggest is my son, <clears throat> actually, and, um, you know, he has no criminal record. He's 20 years old. And I just want to inform you that, you know, he's more of an inner city youth. And um, a couple of his buddies just got shot recently, you know, within uh, neighborhoods. And so I think he'll bring a unique quality to the Youth Leadership Committee because, you know, he'll be able to reach the more troubled youth. Me and Ms. Trotman spoke with it a couple of days ago over the phone about trying to um, also not only incorporate the youth that's maybe, um, you know, already granted and gifted in the neighborhoods, but you know, a unique quality of a youth that can come in that's bringing also um, some of his troubled friends and can reach out to them also. So I think that would be a unique quality he has for, that can offer your um, youth leadership committee. But he works, you know, he has a baby, you know, and uh, he has bills. He unfortunately had to grow up really fast. So I was offering to even FaceTime him today also while he was at work, but um, I'm uh, sure if I can get the dates and the time early, I can make sure he's off. And so I would like for him to be able to be presented this opportunity to show him a different way and also carry that vision back to his youth that's in the neighborhoods and that's actually out here doing uh, mischief. I think the ones need to be really touched with um, this opportunity too. So. Right. And I will touch on what you just said. So our meeting, our, we, we meet every first Monday and every third Wednesday of the month, so we meet twice a month. Our next coming up meeting is the 18th. Um, so, you know, like you just stated your case there, you know, you know, I, you know, I'll take it into consideration, but, you know, that, that only have to be brought before the committee, yeah. and they will all, you know, make their decision accordingly, since we have this unique situation with two. Right. Um, now, just because, you know, however this ends out, we have your son, we have Solomon Martin, right. you know, that doesn't mean he's excluded from the commission. Right. You know, right. we can still work together. That, right. you know, yeah, we can still work together. He's not. We can still have that partnership. So that's that's it. This doesn't you know it doesn't exclude anyone. And I appreciate the Thursday your approach to it, and that's what's so beautiful about it because you're not excluding. But to get to go along with that, so you get the information from the brother, mm -hmm. and, and you got the other individuals. So y'all do what y'all have to do, and then just let us know. Yeah. And it'd be nice if you use both of them. I can appreciate yeah. that. So um, just to, for the record, because we are pressed for time, I would like to have them at our next meeting, which is the 18th. That's a Wednesday. I would and love that. We got to get going. You set that up. <laughs> yeah, okay. well, yeah, I'll be there. I just need to have them there. Yeah. Uh, Nathan, uh, do you guys, since it's a new ordinance, do you have a mission statement already in here? Yes, we do. There you go. Okay. I can read them. I want to just pass it on so we can all have a copy of it. I can, I can make copies. We can okay. just have a yeah, just to make what a copy. So make a copy for the 3:30. You'll be in this room. 3:30. Yeah. So I'll make a copy of this for you. In the yeah, I can just go and I'll drop it off. But yeah, we do have a mission statement. We have to have that. We right. have to have yeah, something. Right. We want it, so we are not. Okay. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Like I said, any more questions? Definitely. Come to our meeting. I appreciate you. Uh, thank you. Being here, uh, I thank the commission for the hand. And I think y'all go because Brother Fitzpatrick behind you. I know y'all gonna do something. Okay, moving on down, we got, thank God, we got that together. The annual activities report, the uh, secretary did an outstanding job making a presentation to the council last, was it last Tuesday? Yes. Last week, so she, she saved us for another year, I guess. Uh, but it's kind of a thick situation. Normally the city prints them out because every commissioner is supposed to give them one, but for some reason they didn't really deal with the time, so I'm going to make sure. I'll get a copy of it, print it out, and get it to each commissioner. But I will email everybody a copy of that. No, can we email it? Yeah, I can email somebody. I know Mr. Payne does not well, I don't go to it. Everybody else deal with it. I will make sure you get a paper copy of that. I'm the only one. You know, but okay. Good. I will make sure you get a paper copy of that. You too. I got an email. Okay. I got all your stuff. 
Uh, okay. <laughs> Black Males Matter Day is a situation where we was taking the young men down to the state house. Uh, Marty was having that. I knew he was having some problems uh, acquiring a bus based on financial commitments or uh, having the proper money. So I'm not quite sure how that went, but he's not here, so we have to delay that. Uh, Black, History, Black History Month. Yeah, he just walked in, but oh. right back out. He oh, okay, he probably didn't so <clears throat> The Black History Month activities, we normally, Marty at the last meeting where he passed out, the activity situation he go to like. Uh, hopefully it's been as nice as it's always has been. It's been tremendous uh, money in terms of Black History activities. They put on a tremendous uh, situation every year, and we're proud to be a part of it. So moving on now to Black History, I mean the Black Barbershop Health Initiatives, I think Marty and, and Nyla touched on last week the fact that the state chairman is, is, is adjusting our participation in terms of numbers of, of, of uses. I expressed concern back uh, last month on the far as i if we could educate one, we'd give what we're supposed to do, but the state seemed to be more concerned about not, not just numbers, I guess financially preparing the, the equipment, but anyhow. Uh, the main thing she had on the kickoff days is the first downstate, and they'll be here in Michigan City when we do our thing on the 25th. So, the barbershop talk on April 4th. Now, that's, I think, our city council lady, that's your situation? Um, yes, I Would actually... you want to share right quick on that? Um, I actually um, tried to get in contact with the owner of Marvelous Cuts because originally we were going to do a date in March, um, but with all the different events and, again, the coronavirus is prohibiting a lot of events mm -hmm. and um, activities to move forward and a lot of things are getting canceled. So I did contact him to see if April 4th is doable and I have not got a response back from him yet. Okay. So hopefully that will be done. Yes. You're not going to have 100 people at the barbershop. shop. You may have four or five. Uh, but for those that are uh, not familiar, uh, as far as the Black Barbershop Shop Health Initiatives, every year we have four or five, or we have about three this year, barbershops shops where we have health people go in and, and we try to get them to take some health screening type of thing because we know that black males frequent the barbershop shops for gossiping. And we take advantage of that to try to get them to be more healthy. And so that's what that's all about for those that might have thought. Uh, this, this is what, our fifth or sixth year we've been doing that? It says 10th annual. This, this is the 10th annual. Wow. It's 10 years? Wow. I didn't realize that. But we've been doing And, and we, normally, we, I think we got 50 or 60 people each year, just about, which is beautiful. Uh, to get them to take the, the exam, you know, just blood tests and different things, but things that are important. Uh, so we'll be doing that in April. And then to move down to the barbershop talk, which uh, uh, the student just dealt with, that's the situation since we were using the barbershops for health, uh, our representative deals with child support. And so she came up with a beautiful idea to use the barbershops to educate men, especially black men who might run across the street to get away from being responsible. <laughs> uh, she used the barbershop to educate them on the reality of child support, the kids being the most important, and it's not as ugly as you think. She did a tremendous job in doing that, so I'm glad to see that that's advancing. When do you be at the Blue Chip for the, uh, does that then happen already? No, that's in June. June okay. the 2nd through the 4th. Good, good, because uh, we didn't ask about that because, you know, she did it for a few times and then was in the magazine. I said, wow, blew me out. And now she's part of the, the state is coming up, right? Right. It's okay. our um, annual Indiana Child Support Conference, which all 92 counties are invited, all the local 40 child support agencies, which will have um, attorneys, deputy prosecuting attorneys, wow. caseworkers, um, other different vendors and it's a uh, session breakout sessions and workshops that's over three days which will be held June 2nd through the 4th here at um, Lucha Casino. And, and you'll be talking about your Yes, and there's, um, I was asked to um, 
do fatherhood initiatives. So I was going to speak on the barbershop talk and also have a representative, which um, Mrs. Trotman, who co-sponsors with me with my barbershop talk, to speak on the commission of social status and the impact of that and what services it renders as well. Thanks. June 2nd through the 4th. So we really encourage the commissioners to frequent that because uh, it's going to be a nice event. Another thing, it's not on the uh, uh, agenda, but I appreciate it. Uh, now, turn your phones off when you come to the meeting. They said it at the city council, but I didn't want to be that, you know. But I think I have to. <laughs> Please, turn your phones off when you come in, and that way we won't have these distractions. I'd appreciate that. Okay, now we move down. And any questions on the old business? We kind of rushed through it. But uh, is there any questions on any part of it that you need a better explanation or comment on? Okay, good. Because I wanted to have uh, a few minutes left for our committee because our round table, you know, I always be concerned about giving everybody a chance to talk about what the organization is doing or what, what is happening in the community. So we got a few minutes that you don't have to preach, but not, not referencing to you, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just like long talk. I, I, I shouldn't have yeah. said preach, <laughs> but if you just take a few minutes to share with us uh, whatever is going on in your organization that you think the community would, would want to know about. So we start yes, uh, uh, just for informational purposes, the old work one that was located on Eighth and Wabash mm -hmm. in that plaza has now moved into uh, the old Central School, which is the Nika Building. So uh, the same services are being offered, including more, but the physical location is no longer at 8th and Wabash. It is at the NECA building, which is the old Central School, 9th and 8th in Spring. Now, I always change it. I was just still the week. same. It's just a physical just Monday, movement. Still Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Definitely. But since the school is moving. I would recommend you call a prior to ensure that whatever you're looking for you bring the proper documents, so you'll have to make two trips. What is the office hours for us now? Um, you can go to the website and they have it. I think about eight to four. Yeah. Yeah. But there's some days they're closed with yeah, like the middle of the week. Like, right. So you can go to the website, but just for informational purposes, it is no longer at the eighth and Wabash location. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. You stay on. Oh, okay, Lester. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is uh, some something that's in the works. I don't, I don't know whether everybody's aware of it or not, but it, it's in the works. The uh, the Blossom building that's behind uh, Charles Westcott Park, that big empty oh, wall right. that's right. empty there now. Right. Uh, I guess providing funds can be allocated. That uh, the plan is to put a mural of houses that were in the patch, put up a, a mural of that whole wall with houses that that were in the patch. Yeah. So they got an architect and they've got people that's looking into that, so hopefully that'll come to fruition soon. Are we using local artists? Are we using local artists? I have no idea. I'm assuming that's the... Do you know who's in charge of that lesson? Like I said, it's still in the works. I've got the pictures of the patch that they want. Yeah. I've got a lot of pictures of the patch, houses that were in the patch. So that's just. Well, keep us up there. You know, I'll we'll keep it up on the uh, A lot of people don't know. You know, they're talking about this this virus that's. Uh, it, uh, I guess it uh, originated out in the Washington area, Seattle, Washington. But a lot of people don't know. You know, Seattle, Washington is in King County. Mm -hmm. But it was recently named Martin Luther King Jr. County. <laughs> mm -hmm. So a lot of people don't know that Seattle's county is Martin Luther King County. So mm -hmm. good information. Okay, that's it. <clears throat> All right, Tiny? I don't have anything. Okay, uh, Ms. Tilma? No, there's no. We didn't. Okay, uh, preacher. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready now. <laughs> you gonna pass the plate? Okay. Well, when I get done. <laughs> uh, I just want to mention about the, the new virus of course. Uh, 
virus. Um, you know, to a lot of us, uh, it's, we don't want to get upset about it and worried about it, of course. Uh, we stand on the Word of God. No weapon formed against us is going to prosper, but I'm not going to go from there on. Uh, but uh, for me, it's like a personal thing. Because back in 1953, uh, the, the, the government was saying, uh, everything's all right. We got everything under control. Uh, so don't worry about a thing about polio. And that's when I ended up getting it. So those people that have contacted um, the virus, the new virus, we need to think about those that have died. And that's how polio started. It started little by little by little by little, gradually from Nigeria, Africa, from over to coming over to here, and finally we had it, and everybody still was, you know, they didn't care. It didn't, didn't, it didn't touch their home yet. But when it did touch their home, then we woke up. So uh, when there's any kind of new virus, I'm, I'm always concerned and aware. Uh, so that's all I'm saying is, you know, uh, I'm not a doctor. I am a, I, I am a victim of viruses. So it doesn't have to be a polio virus. It could be any type of virus, anything at all. And uh, uh, here again, uh, I, I was I had polio and and you know about it and uh, but I'm here and uh, so uh, uh, I just wanted to share you that share that with uh, you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Randy sure. on that. You know, you talk about the virus. Yeah, it's serious. But what we should be more concerned about is the misinformation that we're getting about this. Mm -hmm. You know, when it's coming from the very top, that don't worry about it, it's going to go away. That's what I'm saying. And then the doctors are telling you, and and a lot of people they get conflicted yes you know, because a lot, a lot of people believe whatever that man tells them you got health leaders standing you right there health leaders standing right there contradicting so exactly it's, you know, it's, it's, that's the problem that's the problem you know. well, what that says is that as individuals you have to take care of yourself take care of yourself mm -hmm. I mean, we that's can't, what I said stay up you know, and, and, and common was, sense but then in a case like this you find out common sense just, just ain't so common you have to be conscious of yourself but what we need to know is the process and the procedure that you need to take if you think you are sick. You'd be surprised at the, the things you have to go through. You have to go through your doctor and he has to call the state oh, of yeah, Indiana yeah, before you can even get the test. It's, it's so we all need to be aware of the process and the procedure. Well, at least if you feel bad, uh, you know, I, I shouldn't say it, but uh, I, this is a worldwide epidemic. And so it's, it, it needs the emphasis that they're putting on it because it's happening everywhere. But the interesting thing to me is in America itself, we have, and I think about 700 so far this year, every year 700 to 1,000 people die of the flu. Yeah. And we never say that's an epidemic. Uh, you know, uh, we accept that, mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and we got things to address that. Mm -hmm. But I just like to throw that out that, uh, you know, this, this, this is serious because, it, like I said, it's worldwide and they don't have a cure. Mm -hmm. So you, got, you can't be playing with it. This is a serious connotation. But I just said America's interesting because we accept 700, 800, 1,000 mm -hmm. people dying of the flu every year. 20,000 dying worldwide. Hey. Okay, and then we never made the flu an epidemic. The uh, World Health Organization, as I was giving out the call, the World Health Organization just declared it a pandemic. Okay. So, okay, we, we will leave that alone. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Stuck in the NAACP, you have something to share with us? Yes, um, on the 21st, the NAACP is having a trailblazer event. Um, I'm not sure if the commission would like to purchase a table or if you'd like to purchase your own individual tickets, which I do have today. They're $50 a piece. Um, so I'm encouraging everybody to please come. We're honoring educators, which um, there is an obvious shortage of African-American educators. Also, on March 30th, um, I'm going to pass these around, um, we're having a candidates forum. And we do have U.S. congressional candidates here, um, attorney general candidates, um, Karen Tallian, state representative, county council at large, county treasurer, as well as judges who are up. If anybody you know is um, not registered to vote, there is a little scan me button right here. You can just use your phone and like look down into it and they will pull up the Indiana voters um, information for you to register to vote. Um, that deadline is April 6th, I believe, to register to vote. So uh, 
please come out to the candidates forum and um, also please purchase tickets for our um, Trailblazers event. And then finally, on every fourth Thursday is our general membership meeting at 6.30 at Ivy Tech. Right. Uh, thank you as far as the uh, commission, we're not financially able this year to uh, get a table. <laughs> uh, but uh, I encourage y'all to be the members. Uh, it's a nice event. And, uh, yeah. uh, uh, there's quite a few uh, good people being recognized as far as teachers. Some of them have passed, unfortunately, but at least they, they gave recognition at this point. Okay, uh, Marty, I don't want to be too loud. I know you sorry, have something uh, to say. Sorry about my tardiness. No, never. So, um, yeah. so I'll pass around a charge report. Um, there's only uh, there's three new submissions, um, emissions on there. Or submission, I say. Uh, first one is a $75 donation from a Minority Health. Um, and then uh, two subtractions. I'm sorry, one mission and two subtractions. Um, the chess club donation for 150, and then the payment that's rare for the sponsorship for uh, from Blue Chip and Applicate for Black Human Activities. And then, so that brings it down to two thousand two thousand and seventy dollars and ninety two cents. Um, any questions about the sponsorship? I'm also still working on pulling out the things that we do yearly and then trying to look at a budget of money that we need to have each year in order to do those, those things. I'm close. There's a whole bunch of stuff, but I'm close. It's going to take, it's take a But any questions about the treasury report? Are we getting kind of low? Okay. The, the fish fry. Can I get a motion to accept the treasury report as given? So moved. Second. second. Moved and second. Yeah. I'll move the treasury report by saying that. Uh, Aye. Uh, Thanks, Mike. Then I have one more thing. So for the uh, Black Barbershop Health Initial, the annual, um, the annual event or the anniversary event down in Indy, uh, Mr. Garrett uh, will be providing us money to for the bus. The only thing is we have to pay for it up front. So uh, the bus is fourteen hundred dollars, um, but they are reimbursing us. So I needed a motion so so I can get that distributed to the bus company. Okay. What's that, to April 1st? Yes, sir. How many people we got lined up? Uh, Nyla has a sign-up. I know she has some barbers and people from the community. Um, I don't know how many people from the commission wanted to go. I sent the email out. Um, I can't remember if I got any responses or not at this point <laughs> right now. I might have. I didn't. I'm sorry. I, I have it down. I just don't know off the top of my head. That midnight shift is good. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Today, we're going to laugh like that. We're going to you know, make sure we have enough. But, yeah. So how long is it going to take? You know how I am. How long is it going to take for them to reimburse us? Uh, if we give up 1400 we ain't got nothing left. I can... Uh, Talk to Mr. Gary about that again. Just know that's what he wanted us. No he said he's gonna reimburse you. I asked I my home. I'd like to yes, sir. If I, could. And if nothing else, we have a conference call. Do you know, okay or whatever? I just feel more comfortable knowing we got something in the kitty because you know, we got the scholarship coming up. Matter of fact, I got a application here on the video yeah. of a young gentleman that's applying for the scholarship. So I want to make sure we can have that scholarship. Did we uh, already put out the information for it? Uh, who has? Yes. We're on the education committee. I'm not education sure. Education committee is I want to say no. It was last year. Was like, mm, and it was me, April, you, April, and Tracy. April. Oh, okay. In terms of getting that early, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll be on top of that. And make sure we get those out. And we, we uh, well, all we really got to do is like redo the date right on the right. right. Get it right. out. Because mm -hmm. I mean, I. So I missed something here. So you're saying we hold off on making a motion on the fourteen hundred, right? Until we find out when the reimbursement is. Yeah, how soon is going to come? Get a little up, and yeah, there's two weeks. I, I, like I, hate to, I hate to give it up in April. And you get ninety days. And then right. come May, and you get ninety days or something. Right. Yeah, got it. Uh -huh. and that's why I'm concerned. Yeah. Well, we don't have enough people to fill it. Well, then my, exactly. Then our, then our next dilemma is that we won't get the bus in time because the controls also have to cut the check, and the bus people aren't. They don't invoice. You pay them before they do any service, or they're not very. <laughs> you are friendly, or yeah, they're not friendly about that. Kind of. well, they want their money before they do anything. Well, so. if it's that type of situation in terms of dealing with the controller, uh, then we, we still check with him, and, and we can make a decision in the next few days. Or, or we can, when, when is the deadline for getting the bus? Uh, I'm not sure that. I'm, I'm not sure about the exact deadline. Just know 
to get a check cut well, and get to really, them. That's, we what, that's that, what I'm we saying. Went yeah, that's school, right with Edgewood School. Huh? We went through that with Edgewood School. Uh, you got to have a time right so that when Board of Works meets, they take care. So I understand mm -hmm. that. I was just saying that if it come down to that type of situation, we, depending on when they're going to give you a verse, we can get the check cut early and just hold it until the situation is proper to use it. But I, I, to be honest with you, I just don't want to give up no fourteen hundred dollars not knowing when we're gonna get it back. Mm -hmm. I agree. So and we gotta have a thousand to get a kid, whoever. The scholarship is was last year Friday, May tenth. So up to okay. Friday of this year would be the um, eighth. That's when we gave it out on May. May tenth. Okay, yeah. so. April first, we if we didn't get out the fourteen hundred, is they gonna be the reimbursements? Cause we got two thousand, we give out fourteen hundred, we got six hundred left, we ain't got enough to give out the scholarship. Mm -hmm. That's my concern. It ain't got nothing to do with those. So. That was actually when the deadline, I mean the documents were due. We didn't we cut out. a check until June. Yeah, you didn't cut a check until June. Okay, yeah. 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 I, I still. Just, yeah. If if you could just let me know in the next day or so, Mark, so we, and we'll we make arrangements. Feel the bus. My question was twofold. It was also piggyback on yours about when the reimbursement comes. But secondly, he said, he said, now, he, but he said, yeah, he said, now I had the sign up list. And so if the sign up list is nowhere near complete or nowhere near what's going to pass, take the bus, the bus then. Because you know, when we talked about this, yeah. and I asked him, they, they, they made a commitment to pay for it, and they didn't say nothing about reimbursement. Mm -hmm. And you remember when, they, when, they, when he talked to the man downstate, and we put the question to him, yeah, we'll call him to pay for it. I ain't forgot. I ain't forgot. They didn't say nothing about you pay and we pay. But that, I ain't got no problem with that if we can work it out. So, but if you can just let me know. Mm -hmm. and we'll so, how will we approve it then? Because our meeting is going to be after the at first. You know, we got to do it on the We got to do it over the phone or something. Yeah, I'll make a conference call. They, they, they make yeah, we got to do it in the next couple of days mm -hmm. to give you an opportunity to make yeah. your arrangements. Right. Marty, would there be a fee for commissioners if they want to attend? There is no, um, there is no fee. It's all free. Okay. So, so if you guys want to go, I mean, I mean, because ain't but a few people going, we can take a carpool down there. Oh, man. Well, I think, there's, I think there's, maybe there's a few commissioners that might go, but I think there's more people from the community than, yeah. than yeah. anybody. Yeah. Well, so Mr. Gear asked for the barbershop people to bring their like the representatives from each city who were being a part of, and then some of their like um, you know the pairs they cut or some of their their clients to come so the the goal was to reach out to the barbershops that we've been participating with as well as the commissioners and their clients to see if any of them wanted to come and I, I think Mark like she he said Nyla had the list based on the um, I think it was four barbershops that we have and then their clientele. Matter of fact, uh, when, we, when the, the, the state chair was here and we talked about it, that was the emphasis that was put on it. The, the gentleman from the community. Right. Not so much the commission or the, the barbershops. We talk about the, the gentleman from the community. So we'll see what the list says. Okay. okay. And then we'll see what the list says and what we got and we'll go from there. Okay, so I'll just reach out to Nyla. Yeah, get, get, give me some numbers. Okay, is there any, any, oh. Oh, one more thing, Mr. Uh, Payne. Uh, yes, sir. On Friday, um, oh, yeah. <coughs> Jared reached out to me and they have two finalists. Um, I don't know if you, you all should have got actually an email from him. I, uh, I, I emailed him, everybody's email address and CC back with two uh, applications for uh, their two finalists. Um, they want us to look through those, and um, I would have printed them out, but my printer was giving me problems this morning. I have to go print this from today. Mr. George's office or Clark's office, George's office. Um, but there's two uh, two finalists. They want us to look from that and um, pick, and then on Friday we'll present the check at six o'clock. This Friday. That's, that's, Clark. that's the Clark. three. That's the three. Was it three thousand? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so so, okay. Did, uh, did he want us involved in selection? I thought he just wanted us to give the money. The email made it seem like he wanted us involved in selection. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I should have said, you know, that's a big, big change. But whatever, you know, if that's what he wants. But initially, I thought he just wanted us to give out the money. But no problem. You know, uh, did you say this Friday? Yes, sir. Yeah, I got the email. At 6 o'clock uh, at Park. Oh, okay. So you going to give it out? 
Uh, I would like for more commissions to be there. I appreciate that. I was running this Because you have enough time. Up. So, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll be there. Uh, so okay, okay. no, I'll just mess with you because <laughs> you might be sleeping. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> but if you guys can kind of look uh, at those submissions on your email, yeah. and um, maybe Friday when we get there, we can have a, a, a little session. A, a, yeah, a decision. Or, or if just one or two or three of us want to take that task on for the whole commission, then we can do that also so we don't make it more complicated than it has to be. So we can decide too, that real quick. As, as, mm -hmm. you look, if you, as, you, as you look at them, and if you uh, select one of them, email the secretary. I was going to say, Tracy and myself, because I already looked at them. I did. And then, so I did just, yeah, so we can just make a decision. So if, if, if the commission feels uh, good about it, do you mind if myself, Tracy, and Latanya makes the decision for us? No problem. No problem. No problem. No problem. But I still, still like many commissions. All right, there. definitely. I can't make but, it. But no problem. Okay. They'll definitely take care of that. I, I can make it for that one. All right, anything else? Uh, but I, I know you talk a long time. You got a minute. All right. <laughs> yeah, I know we be active, man. Well, so far, the Fly High Youth Organization, our short program, short program started up. We've been um, out there in Lakeland at the Donated Community Center down there. So we had uh, four sessions so far. It's been coming along good. Up in Smoke, donate uh, sponsors food each time for them. And uh, we up and running, man. Bus me rolling. We was in the parade. Hey, things so we rocking. And uh, we just getting it going, man. We got a lot of kids, a lot of youth involved with us, and uh, we got it going on, as good, usual. Good. Well, I appreciate that. That's, that's beautiful. I'm just glad to be a part of it with you. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, the, the people was calling me, uh, you know, I thought about what, after the last council meeting, I got quite a few calls about the decision the council made uh, type of thing. Uh, but... As far as the individual, and I won't go into it, no, I'm not concerned about that because I'm the crazy one on the council, on the commission. Ain't nobody else crazy. So what I mean by that, I'm not concerned about who I need. What I am concerned about is the composition. Uh, a, a, a few years ago, we were put out of whack when, remember when Nyla was on the human rights and she got up to human rights, then the council put her on here. That, that distorted our whole situation with our 13, which yeah. by ordinance we went to 14. Yeah. And okay, so we, we accepted that. Now when Jean got off, you know, the council uh, put us, uh, um, uh, it brought us to the 13. Mm -hmm. Now the, the council is putting us in another position. I talked to the president this morning and I made him aware of the fact that the ordinance says one thing and I'm not quite sure that's what the council is doing. But I, he told me that he was going to contact the clerk. They're going to go through the whole process, review everything. He said he's going to see who appointed who and who extra. He's going to get it together. So Actually, if I may interject there, as being the um, liaison for the council, I actually did my due diligence and research as well, and I reached out to the clerk of the, uh, with the city clerk's office. And from my findings, we are within our 13 members, um, and everything is okay. Oh, I know you think. Oh, yeah, I thought you were talking about 13. Is that 13? Like that, that is 13 with me. Yes. You know, we're supposed to have 13, period. Yes. You were that, 13. We, we, we're supposed to have 13, so everybody included. Right, you, that okay. is including myself. Okay, well, I was giving Yeah, yes. I had told her what my... Yes. Uh, no, I appreciate that, because that's what he was going to do. Because my understanding was, last time me and Sigurd talked about it, there was 14. Yes. Matter of fact, she counted. Yeah. So, right. and then, with Jean leaving, that brought us to 13. Mm -hmm. Now, with this appointment, you would have yeah. seen that there would be 14. If, I, if, but if she but steps if I, down... He would be the 13th, am I correct? No, she's not. She's not. Step 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 back. Back. In fact, can I just uh, verify the roster? Okay. Yeah. Um, Mr. Corley, Ms. Ganshaw, Mr. Norvell, Mr. Payne, Mr. Williams, Ms. Kelly, Mr. Millsap, Ms. Troutman, Ms. Williams, Ms. Allen, Mr. McCormick, Mr. Carroll, and Ms. Tillman. Ms. Kelly. You miss Ms. Ms. Kelly. Ms. Kelly. Uh, no, I Kelly. Kelly. Oh, okay. Yes. Thirteen. Is that, that is thirteen. Is that everybody here? Yes. I, I, is that and everybody? And that is the full roster. Okay. 
Hmm? Of the commission, yes. Okay. Oh, you forgot. She was saying my name. Oh, no, Pastor Williams. Oh, you said his name? Oh, no. Oh, no. She didn't say my name. He didn't say Mr. Cox. Oh, oh, so, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There you yeah. go. Yeah. 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 Thank God. So, so, we do have so that puts us at 14. Right. That's what he wants to go. The audience is on 13. I want to make a thing out of here because the president said he's going to get it. I appreciate you. Uh, checking out, but he said he don't think so. I don't want to make it an issue here. But uh, as I told him, the ordinance said 14, we put up with it for a minute. Let's, either you make some adjustments, make some uh, uh, changes, or either you add it up to 15, because we can't do 14. Yeah. We want an odd number. So he's aware of that. So whatever, I told him, whatever y'all decide, you're the council. I'm not challenging you. I just would like clarity. Yeah, I have a simple suggestion. You can use Walter Cox and Tony Cox. Now you got 15. So you will vote like that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you can do it with the president because you are uh, representative. I mean, with the chair, the president of the council, right. And y'all get it straight for us, hopefully, by the next meeting, and we function by what y'all say. Because y'all are going to come up with the ordinance. So I, I'm not challenging. I'm just trying to get clarification. Yes, I appreciate that. But I thought we had 14 with this new edition. The whole thing, but I didn't have to count right in front of my face. Yeah. And matter of fact, I was getting on the secretary because she knew it was 13 when they put it 14. I said, come here and say nothing. Yeah, and I was like, I don't want to be no controversy. Yeah, it's a lot of controversy. That's the first day I asked You know, it was 13. Like, but it's all right. We'll get it straightened out because we got good people on the council. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there any other business? Uh, and with that being said and that miscount, I will make sure if um, with the exception of the three that said they don't check their emails everybody has a contact list like the membership deal, like this here oh, yeah. everybody's yeah. name yeah. number so we right. can have a accurate account so, and right. everybody has access to everybody so be looking for that in the next <coughs> and, and plus uh, for I forget uh the secretary, the clerk gave her a list, uh, which I thought everything was taken care of. Willie, you took care of yours? Mm -hmm. This morning. The, this, uh, 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 Sister Ellen, have you been to the clerk to sign mm -hmm. your thing? Okay. And uh, Miss Kelly, Ms. Kelly mm -hmm. she we had to leave. But uh, well, she went. Oh, okay. And mm -hmm. then uh, Rodney, and, right, that's and the question one. And, and, and I guess I'll make sure uh, Pastor Williams. Okay. Okay, good. Yep. Okay. So that, that, is there anything else I'm missing? Public comment. Oh, I'd like, right, okay. like to thank our sponsors for the Black History. I'm on the Black History Committee. Right. The Black History Committee, for those that might not might have forgot, is part of the Social Status Commission. And anyway, so our community partners, uh, La Beza Art Center, Essence Rare, uh, Mindful LCC, LLC, Mindful Motion, My, okay, LPA Counseling. IBE, State Farm, Applegate and Company, Horizon Bank, Health League, High Praise Ministries, the NAACP, United Way, um, Life Changes, NIFSCO, and the Visitors Bureau, and the Visitors Bureau for uh, sponsorship for the Black History Month activities and communities. Thank you, one and all, and those that came out to the Black History Committee events. And they were mostly free. Thank you for the community for supporting. We had a couple of bad weather days, but um, people still came out and supported Black History. But our commission has not been coming out and supporting Black you know, History. I, I, I need to do some clarification. I know we're part of it because Marty is setting it up, but are we the sponsor? No, we didn't. We didn't do sponsors this year because we yeah, didn't. What I mean in terms of the whole thing. She so it, it worked. So out of the out of the social factors committee was where. Right. Is where uh, oh, so that, that's where it came. Okay, because mm -hmm. I know you. So, okay, yes, cool. Sir. Beautiful. I just I like to get clear. You know, I get okay. confused sometimes. Okay, is there any other information? Well, well, I just got a I just got a message from Mr. Jones. I guess Park is uh, canceling everything because of coronavirus. So he was wondering if we could have it in downstairs, which I don't know about that. Six o'clock on Friday, if that's possible. Um, so um, my only other suggestion is a building I have access to would be the uh, Trustee. trustee's office in their conference room, possibly. Where's that located? Uh, oh, 26 Soul 1 East oh, Michigan Boulevard. Right down right from Carroll. Next to the Allen Hospital. I just don't know about Carol, how much room there will be, okay. or uh, if, uh, or I know also right I could get the community room at the police department, too, probably at 6. Okay. Or, 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.